Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, today we are going to build a new chicken tractor. Um, I realized uh, yesterday that the broilers are old enough to come out into their tractors. And then I realized we don't have a tractor. So uh, they're out in their pen area right now, which is fine. Uh, but we want to be able to get them to new grass uh, as we need to. So uh, I already built one of these tractors yesterday and it turned out great. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'll show you first of all that one, show you everything that we need to build it, and uh, then we're going to build another one uh, because I'm going to split the broilers up into two groups. Each tractor will hold 25 of them. I uh, will move them every day to new grass. I do want to give a little bit of credit. Uh, the, uh, uh, de the design is from another homestead uh, that has a lot of videos online uh, that's also here in Missouri, but they're in northern Missouri, and that is Doug and Stacy Off Grid. If you haven't checked out their channel, do that. And then I took some advice also from uh, Coghill Farms. Uh, they were talking about the uh, Joel Salatin tractor and how it didn't work for them. And I listened to their reasons why and decided that that probably won't work for us either because uh, we don't have, you know, long, long stretches of land to move it on. I mean, we do have about 20 acres, uh, but, you know, a lot of it's wooded and there's a lot of areas that have turns and stuff that we would want to be able to move a tractor. Uh, in and out of. I'd like to kind of move it around our garden area and some other areas that aren't super wide. So uh, this version is a little bit uh, smaller. Um, again, I'll have to split the chickens into two groups, but you know what? It's not going to be that much more work to move two tractors than it would to be move, move just one. So uh, let me show you the uh, tractor that I built yesterday, and then we will get started on building another one today. So here is the uh, tractor that I built yesterday. Uh, it's a very basic design. It is just made out of uh, treated 2x4s, uh, cattle panels, and chicken wire. And then a tarp over the top, which in the summer when it gets uh, really hot out, I do have mesh tarps, uh, like sunshade tarps, uh, that I'll replace that with. And then just put the uh, regular tarp back on if it's going to rain. Uh, but um, it's a very simple design, but it seems to be very effective. Uh, you can see... Uh, Again, it's just the bent cattle panels and the chicken wire attached to the top. Each end has a door. And the uh, design of the door I do really like. Um, it just It's very simple, just uh, hinged on the top. And it sits up on top like this so the whole end opens up. Again, there's one on each end. I'll plan on putting uh, food on the uh, covered end and the water down on the uh, wet end and uh, should be a very simple design uh, it doesn't weigh much so it'll be easy to pull around the yard I just have a rope hooked to uh, one end for now uh, I've noticed already I'll probably want a rope on both ends just to make it easier to turn but uh, again very simple design but seems to be very effective so I'm going to uh, get started on building the next one and I'll show you everything we need along the way I'm going to try to show you a step by step uh, what, what I'm doing. Uh, a lot of the uh, cutting and that type of stuff I've already done. I didn't figure you all wanted to watch me uh, just cut some boards. So again, the tractor is going to end up being uh, 5 foot by 8 foot. Um, whenever I need to join boards end to end, uh, like we'll have to do for the frame, uh, what I like to do is uh, drill pocket holes. Uh, if you're not familiar with pocket holes, um, what they are is a hole in the end of the board. that can uh, allow you to place boards end to end. It's these holes here so you can put the screws in and that way you're not drilling into uh, end grain as you are putting your boards together which just makes it a lot stronger. Uh, you can pick up one of these little, uh, it's called a pocket hole jig. Uh, I don't remember how much I paid for this, so maybe 10, 15 bucks. Uh, but they come in really, really handy. Um, so. You don't get the uh, custom soup can holder for it, but you can probably make one of those yourself. So that's what I like to do. It's made by Craig, uh, and it's a. I'll put a link to it in uh, the description. Anyway, that makes everything a lot stronger. So we're just going to use the uh, two by fours, and we're going to uh, then just put some. Uh, I just cut some scrap pieces of two by four at 45 degree angles to put in the corners, so that that will help hold everything together tight.
All right, we've got the uh, frame put together. Now we're just going to flip it over so that these braces are on the bottom instead of on the top. So the uh, next step will be to put the uh, cattle panels over and then attach those. Uh, they will overlap a little bit. If you have 16 foot cattle panels, which is normal, uh, these were 16 feet long and 52 inches high. Uh, I know they come in different sizes. These are old ones that were here when we moved in and we had to tear down a bunch of fencing and these are left over. So they were free. So. And I've already cut these in half. So each one is, I believe, seven feet, four inches. Once you cut, cut them to size. So now I will just uh, bend these over and then attach them with uh, staples. We're just going to use uh, big uh, staples. Uh, one trick, I wish I remember where I learned it. It was on another YouTube video. Someone said, I always hold them with the pliers to get them started. And I've been doing that and it actually works really well. Saves on your thumb. Okay, so I have the uh, cattle panels on. Uh, I know you guys missed me putting on the second one, and I just learned something about the uh, camera that we have, which is actually a fairly pricey camera, but I guess it automatically stops recording when the file size hits four gigabytes, which in this case was right when I was putting on the uh, second cattle panel. So uh, now that I know that, I'll be able to work around it. But Anyway, both cattle panels are now on. They just overlapped. I stapled them both to the wood so they're on good and strong. Now I'll measure to uh, see how much uh, chicken wire that I need and then we'll get started putting the chicken wire on. I make it a little longer just so that uh, I actually staple it to the wood instead of just attaching it to the uh, cattle panels I'll staple it to the actual wood so it looks like we need uh, 88 inches all right so we've got first piece cut I'll just lay that over loosely for now And I'm going to uh, cut the second piece and get my staple gun ready and we'll get that all put on. All right, I've got uh, both uh, sets of uh, chicken wire attached uh, again they're attached at the front and back with uh, zip ties I'll probably go on later after I get the uh, uh, doors on and add a few more um, it's stapled along the uh, two sides and then I use J clips in the middle to hold the uh, two pieces of chicken wire together so now I'm going to uh, get started on making the doors all right, I've got the uh, cattle panel uh, for the uh, doors uh, pre-cut. Uh, they are 59 inches, no, 56 inches wide and 28 inches tall. 
So now I just need to attach the uh, chicken wire uh, to each of these and then we can get these put on the tractor. Alright, well it's still sprinkling a little bit, but I've got the uh, doors ready to be put on and uh, it's not raining very hard, so we're going to take our chances. It's weird. It's sunny, but it's raining. Now, uh, one thing I should say, uh, I put these on with zip ties because that's what I had today. Uh, if these zip ties end up not holding up well or if I think we need something stronger, I'll go back later and uh, put them on with hog clips. Uh, that way it'll be a lot stronger, but I, I think these... I think these zip ties will be okay. We're not going to have the chickens uh, way back by the woods, which is where most of the predators are. Uh, they're going to be more uh, in an area where we're pretty active, so I, I don't think we're going to have too much of a problem with uh, predators. All right, for the doors, just sit on the 2x4 kind of center it on there we're just going to put a zip tie here zip tie there there we go and then to uh, lock it all we'll do is uh, just put a piece of wire on each side. We get the uh, other door on. You know, speaking about uh, the amount of work that it takes to raise broiler chickens, it really is not hard to do. I mean, really make sure they have food and water. You know, the hardest part is probably remembering that, you know, you only feed them 12 hours on, 12 hours off, starting at... Uh, but we start at day five. We start doing 12 hours on, 12 hours off. So you need to remember to go out and give them their food in the morning and take it away at night. Other than that, they're pretty easy to raise. Um, hardest part's when you get to the end and have to butcher them all. So there we go, we've got both doors on. Only thing left to do now is uh, secure the tarp. So I'll go get that and uh, get everything ready. I just secure it with uh, screws, with uh, washers, in the grommets of the tarp and once we get that on we'll add some ropes on both ends and we'll be done all right so we've got our tarp and uh, again uh, this size seems to be, be perfect for a, a five and a half by seven and a half tarp and uh, so we'll go ahead and get that put on now, they, the birds that are in this one definitely will not get hit by any predators because we're using a, a camouflage tarp so the predators will never see them I'm just kidding. Now one thing uh, with this design as well, you know, Joel Salatin has been raising chickens for a long time, so he obviously knows his stuff. I'm sure his tractor is amazing for the, you know, big scale stuff that he does. Um, this, this tractor will house up to 25 chickens. And that is the same per square foot that Joel Salatin recommends with his tractor. His is much bigger and he says it can hold 75 to 100 chickens. Uh, so I figure 
uh, if we're going off the 75 number, then this one can hold uh, 25. So we normally do our chickens in batches of 50. And so I'll put half of them in here, half in the other. And you know, I like them to, to have enough room. So if when we get closer to the end, if it seems like they're too crowded, I'll build a third one. We have a lot of cattle panels around, so I'll build a third one and even break them into three if, you know, for the last week or so if if they seem like they need it. Because to be honest, to me this seems a little small for 25 chickens, but like I said, it is the, the same square footage per bird as the uh, Salatin tractor, so. All right, tarp is on. Everything is set. All I need to do is still add the wire uh, to uh, fasten the doors with and add the ropes on the front and the back to pull it around, but I don't figure you guys need to see that. I'm real happy with the way it turned out. I built two of these. Uh, total time was probably about four hours. Uh, total cost was less than 100 bucks for both of them. Of course, I had the uh, cattle panel. I did go out and buy new chicken wire. Uh, and the pressure treated lumber uh, the tarps were actually free tarps when Harbor Freight has their free giveaways I always take the free tarps because they come in handy so total cost was less than a hundred bucks to build two chicken tractors I'm pretty happy with that even if I need to build a third one um, if you guys have any questions or comments uh, have any uh, ideas for me how to improve them love to hear that down in the comments if you're not already a subscriber to our channel, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel now. Also visit our blog and look for us on Facebook. Uh, we're going to keep be put, keep putting out more videos as time goes on. And uh, we hope you guys will enjoy everything that we do. Uh, until next time, God bless. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit subscribe. And also follow us on Facebook and at livingtraditionshomestead.com.